Tonight on Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte threatened a military takeover of Maynilad and Manila water over the onerous water concession agreements with the government. Solon's push for five-year terms for members of Congress and local officials in the amended provisions in the 1987 Constitution. Representative Ismael Toto Magundadatu believes justice will be served in favor of the families of the victims in the Ampatuan massacre. And marine advocates call for joint efforts to prevent and lessen plastic pollution. Good evening, military takeover of the water distribution sector. This is the warning of President Rodrigo Duterte to the two big water companies, Maynilad and Manila Water. Rosalie Cos reports why. President Rodrigo Duterte doesn't seem to stop criticizing the two big water companies, Maynilad Water Services and Manila Water Company Incorporated. Last night, during the birthday celebration of former Senate President Manny Villar, the chief executive warned of military takeover of the water distribution sector. The president has earlier warned of filing economic sabotage raps against the two water concessionaires because of their alleged anomalous water concession deals and their billions of pesos amount of compensation demands from the government. I will order their forces to operate your water. Sundaro, take over Then I will declare a suspension of the writ of Babi's corpus but only against economic sabotos. Meanwhile, for transparency, Malacanang has released to public the letters Maynila and Manila Water sent to the office of the president on December 10, 2019. According to Maynilad's letter, it is willing to cooperate with the Metropolitan Waterworks and Sewerage System or MWSS in relation to the certain provisions of the water concession agreement. While the letter of Manila Water indicates that it will no longer collect the 7.39 billion pesos amount of arbitral award, it will also defer the implementation of the approved water charge increase. Manila Water also agrees to begin discussing with the MWSS the contract provisions that will be renegotiated. According to Presidential Spokesperson Salvador Panelo, the chief executive is still undecided on the offer of the two concessionaires. The official adds the subject is still under review by the president. Meanwhile, the palace is not threatened and instead dares the two big water companies to do their worst about their plan on increasing their water rates by 100% after the MWSS cancelled the extension of their contracts. Malacanang also reiterates the chief executive will not renege from his constitutional duty of enforcing the law and will not be swayed nor accept any compromise. Rosa Nicoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. Senator Cynthia Villar says she will not interfere with the Senate probe on the water concession agreements with Manila Water Company and Maynilad Water Services Incorporated. This is to avoid a conflict of interest. Joanano details why. It's a long discussion, so hindi po kami kasali doon and ako I will not... Uh, isasama doon dahil uh, baka sabihin may conflict of interest sa akin. Senator Cynthia Villar distances herself from the ongoing Senate probe on the concession agreement with Maynilad and Manila Water. This following reports, the lady senator's daughter-in-law, Justice Undersecretary Emeline Aglipay Villar, is in charge of reviewing the concession agreement with the government. President Rodrigo Duterte has earlier endorsed the Villar's water utility firm, Prime Water Infrastructure Corporation, to replace Manila Water Water and Maynilad as Metro Manila's water concessionaire. But the senator clarifies where the prime water is focused on. And because we have prime water, siguro kami, but uh, we're operating in the provinces, not in Metro Manila. Prime Water has been the water provider of Camellia Homes for decades before expanding its services to provincial communities. Actually, kami po ay yung, yung aming kumpanya sa water started as a water provider of Camellia Homes. And later, several years ago, they realized na kung nasa community na kami doon, might as well serve the community. So, nag-joint venture sila sa mga local water, uh, uh, yung mga 
uh, dun sa mga bayan-bayan. So, we are in the provinces. So, malayong malayo kami sa Metro Manila. President Duterte has also warned the government will take over the operation of the water utilities in Metro Manila. But according to Malacanang, a private company may take over. The concession agreements with Manila Water Company Incorporated and Maynilad Water Services Incorporated will expire in 2022 after the Metropolitan Waterworks and Sewerage System revoked its earlier decision to extend the deals. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. Justice Under Secretary Emeline Aglipay Villar is no longer participating in the review and renegotiation of the water concession agreements with Mainilad and Manila Water. In a memorandum she submitted for Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara dated today, she explains that her inhibition is to eliminate any cloud of doubt on the impartiality of the Department of Justice's conduct of review. This was brought by an allegation of conflicting interest with her affinity to the owners of Prime Water Infrastructure Corporation who are the Villar families with her husband, DPWA Secretary Mark Villar. The same company was mentioned by President Rodrigo Duterte to possibly replace the two water concessionaires. The House of Representatives is now pushing to amend some provisions in the 1987 Constitution. One of the amendments is the extension of the terms of congressmen and local officials to five years. But according to Bayan Muna representatives, this move did not follow the proper procedure. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Lawmakers have been debating about and discussing amending and even changing the Constitution for several years. And this time in the 80th Congress, members of the House of Representatives want to amend four provisions in the 1987 Constitution. One is to relax the limitation on direct foreign investments, tandem voting for presidency and vice presidency, election of senator per region, and extending the terms of office of local officials and congressmen to five years. Lawmakers want the country's economy to go at par with other Southeast Asian countries in terms of direct foreign investments, hence pushing legislative flexibility on foreign investments. We are only ahead a little of Cambodia and, uh, and Laos and Myanmar. All the rest has, have overtaken us in foreign direct investments. And that is why we need these foreign investments to have more taxes for our government and for the employment of uh, more Filipinos. It would be better to have the voting for the presidency and the vice president as a tandem vote to prevent rival political factions to create disruptions on the heads of state. Solons are also pushing for every region to have a representative in Senate, hence the move for a regional senatorial vote. While the five-year term for local officials and congressmen is to ensure that projects and platforms will be fully implemented. The first term, you make your programs, you study, and you'll be able to have that uh, plan. On the second year, the local officials and other representatives, they will be implementing. On the third year, they are now campaigning. So where is the real public service there? Rodriguez adds the current legislators and officials will not benefit from the move as the resolution will be implemented by 2022 should it be passed. There is no such thing as term extension, no. We're increasing the term, but this will apply after the 2022 election. We cannot benefit from this, ex uh, from this uh, additional term, uh, the present congressmen and congresswomen. But according to Bayan Muna Representative Yofemi Kulamat, the resolution did not go through proper process. Kulamat says they seem to want to hasten the passage of the resolution. Relaxing the limit in foreign investments may also not be good as the public's welfare may be forsaken in favor of the investor's objective to gain profit. Kulamat is also not in favor of extending the term to five years as this, she says, may only favor corrupt politicians. But according to Congressman Rodriguez, these matters have already been discussed and debated since the 15th Congress and should already be passed on to Senate. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A guilty verdict. This is what the main complainant in the Ampatuan massacre case, Representative Ismael Toto Mangundadatu, wants to attain on December 19. He admits he is not losing hope justice will be served 10 years after the Ampatuan massacre. 
From Edsa Bagong Barrio, Dante Amento will tell us why live. Dante, go ahead. Good evening, Jego. Kings and families of the victims in the gruesome Ampatuan massacre expect that justice will be served in their favor on December 19, the day of the promulgation of the verdict in the case. One of them is the main complainant, Magindanao former governor and now Congressman Ismail Toto Magudadato. Magudadato recounted his unforgettable experiences during the incident. He said his wife was able to call him before the massacre of 58 individuals, including 32 members of the media, occurred. Yung lumapit si Unsay, nabanggit niya yung pangalan, sabi niya, sinampal niya ako. Oh, yun ang huling mensahe, uh, word na, na narinig ko sa phone. He added, until now, he is still receiving death threats. In fact, yesterday, one of his supporters was shot dead by an unknown assailant, he said. But Mangudadato stressed, he is not losing hope, justice will be served. E even some of their witnesses are being slain and offered by big amounts of money just to stop them from testifying against the suspects. The families of other victims are constantly communicating with him and share the same sentiments. Hindi ko naisip na mawawalan kami ng pag-asa. Ganun man yung ginagawa nila, pinapatay yung mga witnesses namin na iba at uh, tinitret ng ano, ino-offera ng pera, pati nga ako ino-offera ng pera, lalo akong bumangin sa laban sa kanila. He also believes evidence against the powerful Ampatuan clan and cohorts is strong and sufficient to put them behind bars the rest of their lives. Diego Mangudadato's family is now in Manila expected to witness the promulgation on December 19 in Camp Bagong Diwa. And that's the latest. Back to you, Diego. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live from Edsa Bagong Barrio. Relatives of the 2009 Mangindanao massacre victims are in fervent anticipation that a guilty verdict will be handed down for the suspects of the deadliest election-related violence in the country. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Georgine de la Cruz Malabanan is losing hope. She would ever achieve justice for the death of her mother, Gina de la Cruz, one of the 32 journalists who were brutally killed in the Ampatuan massacre 10 years ago. According to Georgine, her life after losing her mother has not been easy, raising her four siblings all by herself. Uh, sa 10 years, Napakarami na pong dinaraan na namin, minsan, mga sabi-sabi ng tao na wala ng pag-asa, pero, pero kami, sa isip at puso namin, meron pa rin pag-asa. At saka, hanggang ngayon, lumalaban pa rin kami ng mga kapatid ko. Georgine hopes to see justice coming soon in the case of the Ampatuan massacre. Ang hiling ko lang naman po ngayon na mabigyan kami ng tamang hustisya sa mga nanay at tatay namin na namatay sa Maguindano massacre. At sana naman po, di na papatagalin. Sana po, ngayong 19, lalabas na po yung totoong katotohanan at saka gusto po namin na Malaman ng lahat-lahat kung ano ang ginawa ng mga ampatuan sa mga biktima. Desiderio Evardo still cannot forget what happened to his son, Julito Evardo, a UNTV video editor and one of the victims in the horrifying murders. According to Desiderio, only justice can put closure to the gruesome atrocity 10 years later. Nagpapasalamat ako sa, ano, sa government natin na mayroon na siyang judgment. Pero kung ano, yung judgment, hindi ko pa kisalang kung life sentence ba yan. Pero mas maganda yun kasi hindi na kami mag-alala pa nga na kung kailan ba uusad ang kaso. Uh, it's better dyan na nangyari na mayroon na siyang promulgisyon sa korte. 
The victim's relatives are now preparing to travel to Manila to personally witness the promulgation of the judgment against all principal accused in high hopes that they would this time attain justice for the 58 victims of one of the worst massacres in Philippine history. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. Anyone without prior communication with the National Capital Police Region will not be allowed to enter Camp Bagondiwa on December 18 and 19. This move is part of the security measures to be imposed by the police in connection with the promulgation of the court's ruling on the Ampatuan massacre. Lea Ilagan tells us why. The National Capital Region Police Office, or NCRPO, will implement strict security a day before and on the day of the promulgation of the verdict in the Ampatuan Massacre. Mag-lockdown na wala muna ang papasok ng mga bisita on the 18 and the 19. Aside from visitors, no rallyist will be allowed beyond the gates of Camp Bagong Diwa in Taguig City on December 18 and 19. Anyone without prior communication with the NCRPO cannot enter the camp. The NCRPO implements full alert status inside the camp on those two days. Specifically requested sa court na kung pwede walang mag sa tapat ng BGMP. Sabi namin doon sa labas. No? Mag-provide kami ng lugar doon sa labas. Media personnel who will cover the security will be positioned outside the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology or BJMP gate inside Camp Bagong Diwa. Kung sino po yung papasukin ng mga uh, media people, personalities at saka camera ay siya lang po. The Quezon City Police District or QCPD will give security to the judge and the court staff while the National Bureau of Investigation and the Special Weapons and Tactics Team will secure the prosecutors. NCRPO Acting Director Debold Sina said they will deploy over 700 personnel for the security of the promulgation. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Underneath Philippine waters lie the world's second largest coral reefs. But such habitat of fishes and other marine animals are destroyed by plastic found beneath the ocean. UNTV program The Dive will take its viewers to another ocean adventure on Sunday with the aim to promote awareness on plastic pollution. Maribel Cabral Cabling details why. Studies say that corals can be a potential source of medicine to cure some diseases including cancer. But Reef Check Philippines President Vanessa Vergara says this potential step forward to therapeutics cannot advance further due to ocean pollution. Even fisher folks fear the tendency of more trash buildup underwater, specifically of plastics. Kung patuloy na madali kung matagsa dito yung mga basura kagali ng mga plastic niyan, uh, siyempre sa katagalan, uh, nandyan niya nakababad sa tubig, uh, magsisink na sila, babalot sa mga coral strip, may tirahan ng mga isda na nahuli natin. So, kung balot na balot na sa mga plastic at kung anong-anong basura yung tirahan ng mga isda, siyempre lalayo sila, aalis sila. Malaking epekto yun kasi darating ang araw, wala na kami mahuhuli dito dahil wala na silang maayos na natitirahan. Coral reefs are among the marine creatures severely affected by ocean trash. The Philippine reef system is the second largest in the world, yet the country is the third largest contributor to the world's ocean plastic pollution. According to the Biodiversity Management Bureau, only 1% of the coral reefs in the Philippines remain in pristine condition. And plastic pollution is one of the major causes of coral reefs' destruction. It's really disabling um, and it's also taking away a home for the fish or squid or whatever lives by there. If we lose coral reefs, you take out the roots of a tree, everything's going to start to fall down. Everything will be affected because all of these are connected in the food chain. Other than feeding the other animals in the ocean, they feed um, half a billion people around the world. 
To address the issue, marine advocates, government agencies, and coastal communities continue to work hand-in-hand -hand towards marine conservation such as the International Coastal Cleanup. I protect oceans. I protect oceans. I protect oceans. I protect oceans. Catch another informative episode of The Dive as Cindy Maduma visits Bowen, Batangas to know how we can join the fight against ocean trash. Make waves beneath this Sunday, 11 a.m. only on UNTV. Maribel Bural Cabin, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I am William Theo, and here are the headlines. Over 500 pigs called in Nueva Ecija over suspected hog virus. 10 million pesos worth of double dead meat seized in Manila. The Philippine National Police say they have no verified information yet on alleged involvement of media personnel in illegal drugs trade. Batokabe family believes trial in Manila will be fair as the Supreme Court allows transfer of venue. And know the tips on how to spend your 13th month pay and year-end bonus wisely. Good evening. Backyard hog raisers voluntarily surrendered their pigs to the municipal agriculture officers in Nueva Ecija province. This following reports of hog death in the town. Rosalie Cos reports. The Municipal Agriculture Office of San Antonio in Nueva Ecija called more than 500 pigs following reports of hog deaths in Barangay Luyos suspected to have been caused by African Swine Fever or ASF. Rowena Liamson is one of the hog racers in the town who surrendered her pigs. According to a municipal agriculture officer who refused to be interviewed on camera, the operations are precautionary measures to prevent the spread of the vector-borne disease among livestock. Affected hog racers will receive 5,000 pesos from the Department of Agriculture. Based on data from the Municipal Agriculture Office, they have called a total of 1,200 pigs in Barangay Mariano, Hulo, and Luyos. The Agriculture Office advises residents, especially hog racers in the area, to immediately report cases of pig deaths so that prompt measure can be taken. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. More than 10 tons of hot meat was confiscated by the Manila City government in a warehouse. The sausages, peking duck, and other meat products are suspected to have come from China. Bernard Dadis tells us why. The Manila Veterinary Inspection Board confiscated some 10 million pesos worth of hot meat estimated at 10.3 tons in a warehouse in Tondo, Manila City. According to Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso, information from a concerned citizen on a shipment that contained illegal products to be delivered to Manila led to the operation. Authorities found pecking duck, sausage, and other meat products in sealed boxes with Chinese characters written on them. The whereabouts of the owner of the warehouse where the illegal goods were discovered identified as Daniel Yulo are now being traced. The seized products will be turned over to the Department of Agriculture for disposal. Maaring masabi natin na tulong din natin sa national government at tulong din natin sa mga local hog raiser o poultry grower kasi yung mga local uh, uh, producer natin, sila rin naapektuhan ng mga illegally acquired uh, meat. Mayor de Magoso added they will make sure the suspects will face charges. The Philippines is implementing an import ban on pork and chicken from China due to the outbreak of avian flu and African swine fever. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Some media personnel are allegedly involved in the illegal drugs trade in the country, but the Philippine National Police say they have yet to verify such information. Harleen Delgado tells us why. 
Some members of the media and even public personalities are allegedly included on the high-value target list related to the illegal drugs trade in the country. This was claimed by Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA Chief Aaron Aquino yesterday. He said some of those personalities are not only drug users but also protectors of drug lords. However, the Philippine National Police or PNP have yet to receive any verified information on the matter. So, ayun, wala pa mga valid, validated na mga reports. Ang um, lahat ay nanatili lamang ng mga uh, raw information. So, um, katuwang naman natin ang PIDEA sa pag-validate ng mga information na yan. According to PNP spokesperson, Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak, 8,000 out of the 12,000 high-value targets have been arrested. Meanwhile, the National Press Club has challenged PIDEA to release the names of the alleged media personnel who are on the list. Moreover, the PNP have expressed confidence they can clear the remaining 17,000 barangays from the presence of illegal drugs before President Rodrigo Duterte's term ends in 2022. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Meanwhile, almost one year ago, a Cobicol party list representative Rodel Batocabe and his police escort were gunned down in Daraga Town, Albay Province. Following the events related to the slaying, the venue of the trial of the uh, venue will be changed. Alan Manansala will tell us why. From a by the trial of the criminal case filed against former Daraga Mayor Carwin Baldo in connection with the death of a Cubicle party list, Representative Rodel Batocabe and his security escort SPO2 Orlando Diaz last year will be transferred to Manila. This after the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the request of the Batocabe family to transfer the venue of the trial anchored on the alleged bias and partiality of Judge Maria Teresa San Juan Luqueliano toward accused Baldo. Proof of that, according to Attorney Justin Batucabe, the slain lawmaker's son is Legazpi City's RTC's permission to Baldo to post bail. Ang mga rulings yan sa Legazpi ay hindi makatarungan po. Kaya yan po natin ng Korte Suprema na ilipat na lang ang kaso dito sa Manila. Kasi alam nila na... na <laughs> Kapikol, uh, yun ang ating makakabangga, ang ating kalaban sa killer, uh, talagang nasa puder po at ma makapangirihan, mayaman. Aside from fair trial, they are confident they are more secure in Manila, the younger Batukabi said. Uh, may mga tao siya sa kung saan saan lugar. Alam naman natin meron sa mga parel, meron sa mga goons. Malakas po ang intimidation factor. So uh, at least dito sa Manila, eh, mas mahirap gumawa ng kalokohan po dito kasi mas madaling mabantayan po. The Batukabes are appealing the ruling of Legazpi City RTC to allow former Mayor Baldo to post bail. Baldo's camp has not yet commented on this matter. In a text message, Baldo's sister said their side will consult their lawyer before giving any statement. It's been almost a year since Batokabe and his police escort were gunned down during a gift-giving event in Daraga Town, Albay on December 22, 2018. Alan Manansala, UNTV News and Rescue, Ligas, PCT, Albay. The Department of Health, or DOH, once again intensifies its campaign to target zero fireworks-related injury in the forthcoming holiday season. Here's why, from Asher Kadapan Jr. Skyrocket was recorded as the most injurious firework during last year's holiday season. Based on data gathered by the Department of Health or DOH, Skyrocket accounts for 74 cases of fireworks related injuries from December 21, 2018 to January 5, 2019. Though it is legal to sell them, the DOH still discourages the use of any fireworks. With its campaign themed off plan Iwas Papotok, Iwas Putol, fireworks display a patok. The DOH encourages communities to just resort to watching organized fireworks display instead. The health department also advises the public of some safety measures. Unang-una nga, huwag gagamit ng mga illegal na mga paputok, yung mga masyadong malalakas. Pagkatapos, sana huwag gumamit ito sa mga public places. And of course, keep them out of reach of children. 
The DOH recorded a significant drop in the number of injuries related to fireworks in the last five years. From 963 fireworks-related injuries in 2014, the figure went down to only 338 incidents in 2018. Most of our injuries are due to mga firecrackers. No? Merong illegal, meron ding legal. Mali lang yung pagpapaputok nila. At saka talagang karamihan, mga lalaki, mga, kaba, mga young men. Ano? Ito kasi yung mga mapangahas, ito yung di ba, payabangan, palakasan ng paputok. As the health department believes injuries and incidents are preventable, they continue to campaign against firecracker use for the coming holiday season. The DOH has been coordinating with the local government units to prohibit the use of fireworks in streets and communities. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, City of Manila. Have you tried riding a Philippine National Railways or PNR train? What did you experience during your trip? Well, some passengers suggest there are aspects the PNR must improve on in terms of their service. Here's Aiko Miguel to tell us about her PNR trip experience. A train ticket is low price, but traveling through PNR trains is not that easy. This is the common experience of regular commuters who use the Philippine National Railways or PNR. The trains are noticeably old, rusty, and worn out, and there's no air conditioning system inside. We tried riding the train from PNR Alabang Station to Bikutan. The fare cost only 15 pesos. The trip took 16 minutes. It was fast, no heavy traffic, but the train was shaking during the ride. It was also hot inside the train. Some passengers even suggest several ideas through which the PNR can improve its services. terminal dagdagan pa nila yung train. Para pong sa LRT, di ba, we're using the beep card and then dun sa mga ano point-to-point -point na bus, ano po, the beep card na tayo eh. So parang uh, on that sense po, napag-iwanan na yung PNR kasi yung pong ticket nila is still the paper form. Trips are often delayed, especially when it is not the rush hour. The PNR management for their part are continuously improving their services. Currently, there are premium trains traveling to Los Baños, Laguna. Some netizens have also posted some images of premium trains which commuters approve of. Commuters hope for old trains to be replaced with new ones to deliver quality service for the public. Kuya Daniel Razon has recently tried the quality of public transport in Singapore. Ang malamig ang kanilang mga, malamig ang kanilang airport dito sa MRT nila po, malamig po. Lumamig pa lalo, tapang Umibilis ang takbo, lumalamig. Di ba? Di ko po ipapawisa na ano. Hindi ko ganun kasi kung kumayo ka man. Kung portable ka pa rin kumayo. Maganda yung safety feature. Sana kung ma-achieve nga yung ganong klase ng transportation, ng mass transportation pero convenient, kahit siguro magbabayad ng medyo mataas-taas, malaki-laki ng konti, parang sulit na din yung ano mo dahil hindi ka, hindi pagod yung katawan mo. Kung galing ka sa trabaho o pupunta ka sa trabaho. Tapos aside from that, uh, yung mga nag pa-private uh, commute sa atin, yung gumagamit ng private cars, makukumbinsin mo din sila na sumakay ng public transport. Kasi nga, komportable, hindi, hindi, ano, hindi sila hirap. Kuya Daniel has also tried riding a shared bike in Singapore. More details about Kuya Daniel's experience in trying out other modes of transportation on KDR TV YouTube channel. Ay Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Sick children and parents came to a high school campus in Lucena City to get treated and that's for free. Over 500 of them availed of medical and legal services in a medical mission jointly held by UNTV and Members Church of God International. Jafet Kablaida will tell us why. 
Aside from quality education, Rosemary Osea, a teacher in Lucena Dalahica National High School Barra Annex in Lucena City, is also concerned about the health of their students. Their school campus is new. It is no clinic unlike private schools and it is far from hospital in the city. Mrs. Osea said that many school children failed to attend class when they get sick and it turned cause low grades. Kasi minsan po marami po mga bata dito ng palabse na sabi masakit ang ulo, masakit ang tiyan, masakit ang ngipin, yung ganun po. Na minsan po ay hindi na pagtutuunan minsan po ng mga kanila pong mga magulang. Because of this, the school requested for a medical mission for the second time from Members Church of God International or MCGI. So kung maganda ang kalusugan ng mga bata, especially makakapag-aral sila ng mabuti, mas makakapag-focus sa paaralan, at makakagawa sila ng mas maayos sa, sa kanilang uh, school and also to their community. So that's our primary goal. MCGI was able to serve over 500 individuals. The free services included adult and pediatric consultation, tooth extraction, medical consultation, free eyeglasses and medicines, and free legal services. Not only the students, but also their parents as well as residents in the barangay availed the free services. Kaya tayo bumabalik po rito kasi nakikita natin yung mga pangangailangan ng mga estudyante at ng mga kapwa-tao natin dito na bukod doon sa, siyempre, doon sa edukasyon na tinatanggap nila, kailangan din po nila talaga yung uh, sa medical na aspeto. Not only the school children, but also the school administration and the barangay council are thankful for the pre-medical mission held by MCGI. Hindi po wala imposible na sa ngayon ano po, na marating itong liblib na lugar o coastal barangay para sa pagbibigay servisyo, uh, malasakit para sa kapakanan ng uh, ating kapwa. MCGI was recently been recognized by Gawad America Awards as the 2019 Outstanding Religious Christian Organization Worldwide. Japet Kablayda, UNTV News and Rescue, Lucena City. Meanwhile, several parts of the Philippines will be able to witness the annular solar eclipse on December 26, according to Pag-asa. The annular eclipse will be observed in the southernmost part of Davao Occidental. According to Pag-asa, the best site of observation is in Balut and Batulaki, Sarangani Island, Davao Occidental, while other parts of the country will observe it as partial solar eclipse. The earlier start of the eclipse will begin at 12.32 p.m. in Manila, while it will begin at 12.43 p.m. in Balut Island. And for the news abroad, exit polls show that the United Kingdom's Conservative Party has won a comfortable majority in Thursday's snap general elections, dominated by the topic of Brexit. Jovic Burmas details why. Prime Minister Boris Johnson's gamble to push for an early vote as a way to end parliamentary deadlock on Brexit looks to have paid off. With the number of Tory seats in Parliament growing from 330 in 2017 to 368, according to exit polls. Johnson needed 326 seats for an absolute majority. It looked like a dismal showing for Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party, which was predicted to lose 41 seats, falling to 191, its weakest position in decades. That outcome would leave Labour 86 seats behind the Tories and could raise questions about Corbyn's future at the helm of the UK's left-leaning party. The Scottish National Party was poised to take 55 seats in the chamber, up from 35 in the last election. The Liberal Democrats could take 13, up from 12, though party leader Jo Swinson looked in danger of losing her seat in East Dermertonshire, Scotland, to the SNP. The Greens are tipped to take one, while the Brexit party looks stuck on zero. The official count is set to continue throughout the night with the final results expected Friday morning, but Johnson decided not to wait before expressing his gratitude. If the media exit polls are accurate, it would mean the biggest conservative majority since 1987 and the UK would likely be on track to leave the European Union at the end of next month, 
as Johnson had promised during the campaign. Jovic Burma's UNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. The former First Lady of the United States and one of Hollywood's most recognizable leading ladies teamed up on a Thursday for a talk focusing on their joint efforts to empower girls to become future leaders. Michelle Obama and Julia Roberts reflected on their trip to Vietnam to work with the Girls' Opportunity Alliance. The Kalki was part of a five-day event that kicked off on Tuesday at the Malaysian capital, gathering together 200 emerging leaders from 33 countries and territories in the Asia-Pacific region, recently selected to participate in the Foundation's program. On Monday, Obama and Roberts had toured a high school in rural Vietnam and met with female students to promote their schooling urging the teens to stay committed to their education as a way to transform their lives. The former First Lady recently published her best-selling memoir, Becoming, in which she detailed the personal experiences that led her to become a highly accomplished Harvard-educated attorney and university administrator, as well as a happy mother and prominent advocate for women and girls. In other news, wreckage and human remains from a Chilean military aircraft that disappeared on a flight to Antarctica with 38 people aboard have been discovered in the turbulent waters off South America's southern tip. Meanwhile, New Zealand police have deployed divers to look for two bodies near White Island Volcano after six bodies were retrieved in a recovery operation. Kath de Maraos reports. In New Zealand. A New Zealand military team on Friday recovered six of the eight bodies that had lain on uninhabited Fakaari Island since earlier this week when the island's volcano erupted, claiming the lives of 16 people. The operation went ahead as planned but was not yet completed, according to New Zealand Police Commissioner Mike Bush, referring to the two remaining missing people that have yet to be located. Bush said that flights will be carried out over Fakaari throughout the day and teams of divers were already trying to locate the missing people. Bush recalled that conditions remain dangerous given that there was a 50% chance of a fresh eruption. The six recently evacuated bodies, all of them believed to be of Australian victims, would be taken to the city of Auckland for formal identification. In Chile Chile's Air Force Commander-in-Chief said Thursday that authorities have ruled out the possibility of finding any survivors from the crash of an Antarctica-bound military plane with 38 people on board. A day after the first floating debris from the plane was located in the Drake Passage, Arturo Merino confirmed that the search also had led to the discovery of human remains and said forensic analyses will determine if they correspond to the plane's passengers. Merino said the search will continue if debris or human remains continue to be found, even though the normal time frame is six days, extendable to 10 days. The Hercules C-130 aircraft took off at 4.53 p.m. on Monday from the Chabunco Air Base in Punta Arenas, Magallanes' capital, for a scheduled two-and-a-half-hour flight to Chile's Antarctic base of Presidente Eduardo Frey Montalva. The plane was carrying 32 Chilean Air Force personnel, three Army soldiers and three civilians, two employees of Chilean construction and engineering company in Proser, and a student at the University of Magallanes. And in the USA. The FBI is investigating the possibility that this week's deadly shooting in Jersey City was an act of domestic terrorism, the New Jersey State Attorney General said Thursday. Six people, including shooters David Anderson, 47, and Francine Graham, 50, died Tuesday during a protracted gun battle in Jersey City, just across the Hudson River from the New York City borough of Manhattan. Anderson and Graham first killed Joseph Seal, a police detective and married father of five, who belonged to a unit responsible for removing illegal guns from the streets. They then fled the scene in a van and holed themselves up inside a kosher supermarket in the Greenville neighborhood, which is home to a growing community of Orthodox Jews. Two of the three people killed inside the store were Orthodox Jews, while the third was an Ecuadorian immigrant. 
According to authorities, Anderson and Graham had shown interest in the Black Hebrew Israelites movement, regarded by some as a hate group, but authorities have yet to determine whether they had any formal ties to the organization. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Losing is not an option for Judiciary Magis, Agriculture Foodmasters, and PITC Global Traders on Sunday as they face their own opponents. Each team must aim for a better position in the team standings. Bernard Dadis details why. It's winner stakes all for Judiciary Magis, Agriculture Food Masters, and PITC Global Traders on Sunday's continuation of the UNTV Cup Season 8 Second Round Elimination. All three teams are sitting at ranks 5, 6, and 7 with 4 wins and 3 losses. The quarterfinals will start mid-January next year with teams 1 and 2 automatically advancing to the semi-final round. Rank 3 to 6 will battle in the best of 3 series in the quarterfinals and rank 7 and 8 will be eliminated. Defending champion AFP Cavaliers with a 6-1 win-loss record has secured a spot in the semi-finals even with a remaining match against undefeated DNR Warriors. NHA builders with 5 wins and 3 losses will battle PhilHealth Plus at San Juan Gymnasium on Sunday at 2 p.m. Builders head coach Bennett Pallad promised his team will work harder saying they cannot afford to lose. Kailangan na magkaroon ng kumpiyansa eh. Medyo kinakabahan lang kaya ang daming errors. In the second game. Two-time champion Judiciary Magis hope to sustain their winning momentum in a face-off against Agriculture Food Masters at 3.30 p.m. Court Administrator Midas Marquez says they will play defensively against the Food Masters as they aim for their fourth win in a row. The conditioning of the boys is a bit back. So I hope we will sustain the remaining games for the year. And in the third game. PITC Global Traders will face undefeated DNR Warriors at 5.30 p.m. The Global Traders need this win because based on the win over their other rule, they lost to the Food Masters and they need to face Judiciary on January 12. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. One of the much-awaited incentives of every employee during December is the 13-month pay or year-end bonus. But there is no better way to use it than to spend your money wisely. Despite a lot of sales or enticing low-priced items, there are some tips on spending your bonus the best way. Joa Nano reports. Have you already received your much-awaited 13-month pay and year-end bonus? Do you already have plans on how are you going to spend it? Or have you already committed it to pay your debts? According to some financial experts, it is better if you invest your bonus for an emergency fund, life or educational insurance, and stock market. But if you have no plans yet, Kuya Daniel Razon shares useful tips on how to spend your money wisely. Kuya Daniel says each one of us has our own priorities in life. But what's important is that we know how to deal with our priorities and we should not live beyond our needs. Uh, kung minsan, uh, yun po ang naging problema ng marami sa atin. Merong, merong uh, tendencies tayo na maging impulsive buyer. Na hindi mo naman kailangan. Uh, kasi, ay, meron sale na ganito. Pero naipunan ka na naipunan dahil doon sa maraming sale na tukso ka na natukso. Bumili na mga sale. Pero hindi mo naman talaga siya. Kuya Daniel advises it is better to use your bonus as a capital to put up a small business. Kung ako sa inyo, think of something na of 
yung nasa linya ng interest mo. Uh, at yung interest mo na yun, ay mapagkakitaan mo pa din siya. Uh, Doon ka mag mag magmuna ng kaunti, mapaikot mo yung pera mo. Tutubo pa. But if you are not into business, Kuya Daniel suggests to place your money in banks for time deposit. Tignan ninyo kung paano ninyo mapapakaro. Siguro, ang most practical way of doing that is uh, kung, hin, kung tamat kang mag, maging entrepreneur, uh, kung tamat kang magnegosyo or what, tignan mo, baka meron yung mga time deposits na maiksi na. Meron kasi mga ina-offer na ganyan ng bago. Kuya Daniel explains it is still our own prerogative how to spend our cash bonuses. But we have to put in our minds we should decide for the good and always think of tomorrow. For other informative vlogs of Kuya Daniel Rezon, subscribe, like, and comment on KDR TV YouTube channel. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this December 13, 2019. On behalf of Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening, happy weekend. I will order the armed forces to operate you that. Okay, Sundar, take over there. Then I will declare a suspension of the writ of habeas corpus but only against economic sabotos. Hindi po kami kasali doon and ako I will not isasama doon dahil uh, baka sabihin may conflict of interest sa akin. Eh, hindi kasi may prime water siguro kami but uh, we're operating in the provinces not in Metro Manila. Hindi ko naisip na mawawalan kami ng pag-asa. Ganun man yung ginagawa nila, pinapatay yung mga witnesses namin na iba at uh, tinitret ng ano, ino-offer ng pera, pati nga ako ino-offer ng pera, lalo akong pumangin sa laban sa kanila. Ang hiling ko lang naman po ngayon na mabigyan kami ng tamang hustisya sa mga nanay at tatay namin na namatay sa Maguindano Massacre at sana naman po di napapatagalin. Maaaring masabi natin na tulong din natin sa national government at tulong din natin sa mga local hog raiser o poultry grower kasi yung mga local uh, uh, producer natin sila rin naapektuhan ng mga illegally acquired uh, meat